Hey guys, this is Neil with Catalyst Machine Works, and I'm going to do a quick design review of a new machine that we've got coming out soon. Ah, excuse me, I had to take a drink of my delicious beverage. This one is called the Shocker. Okay, man, that, that's a that's a pretty silly name. Uh, it kind of tends to make me laugh when I say it because I'm a giant man child. I'm going to leave it up to your imagination as to what that means, but let's go ahead and get into the meat of this thing. So this is available for pre-order. If you go to our website, www.catalystmachineworks.com and go to the 5-inch or the 4-inch frame section, have a look there and you can see it's up for pre-order. And we're going to have all of we have, all of the spare parts, all of the accessories, everything that you might want for your shocker is there. And so make sure to put your pre-order in because with this one, um, this is a this is a pretty new spec. It's gaining popularity rapidly, but we don't know how many people are into this. So we're only gonna make the amount of frames that we have pre-orders for. So if you want one, go ahead and reserve one. Now, you'll see on the product page, there's two different variants. And so if you just wanna build up your frame yourself, hey man, have at it. That's a blast. I love doing that myself. Uh, if you want us to build it for you. So if you want us to do a ready to fly or a bind and fly, you can select the option when you go to purchase that this is a reservation for your bind and fly. And that way you're reserving the frame, but you're not having to go and spend all that money up front for all the electronics and the labor and everything else. You've just got your frame reserved then whenever we get them in, I will contact you through email and say, okay, we got them in. What do you want to go into this thing? And we'll sort all that out and I'll get you out an invoice. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So the shocker, here it is. This is the five inch version. There is also a four inch version. Okay, now what, what the hell is this thing? Okay, um, I need you to understand that this spec is quite a bit different than what you're used to, okay? It took me a while to sort of wrap my head around it um, because its purpose is to be efficient as possible and as light as possible with the intent of long-range flight, okay? So HD long-range flight, all right? So I did not come up with this spec it's not my idea. There's a gentleman but that goes by the name uh, David C. FPV. He's in Europe somewhere. I'm not sure which country. But he came up with this thing as far as I know. I think he's the originator. If you are the originator and you're watching this video, don't get pissed off at me. I'm just getting this information secondhand. Anyway, so David came up with this. And then I believe it was a Johnny 5 FPV that told me, hey man, you're designing a new frame, consider this type. And I looked into it and I was like, what the hell is this? This is totally weird. And then it and then it kind of like stuck in my brain. I was like, wow, this is super cool. So um, I decided to make our own offering and here it is, right? And I'm going to uh, go ahead and state this fact. This is better than what's out there. This is absolutely better in every way than what's out there. I don't mean to sound boastful, but it's, it's just true. This thing's amazing, right? You'll find out why shortly. Uh, but anyway, so I went ahead and did this. And the thing that's so different about this is that it's not, you know, what you're used to, which if you're a racer, you're used to making as much power as you can, going as fast as you can, making it light. Uh, if you're a freestyle guy, you want this thing to be utilitarian. It's, it's easy to use. It's crazy crash tough. You can put a big ass heavy GoPro on top, all those things. This is different. This is about being lightweight and going, going a long distance. And so what we've done here is we've got a freestyle type of frame, right? So you've got a top mount battery, battery goes up here, but the mass of the frame itself is crazy lightweight. So let me get to our product page here. So uh, the five inch version, if you choose aluminum arm screws is 53 grams. The steel arm screw version of the five inch is 57 grams. Now you're gonna save a couple grams if you go to the four inch uh, shocker, right? So 51 grams with the aluminum arms and then 55 grams with the steel arm screws. So let's talk about, and let me tell you which screws I'm talking about. These screws here, 
Okay, so changing the material of these screws is where you're getting that, that, that change in the weight there. All right, I'm not talking about the screws that join the motors to the ends of the arm. Anyway, so yeah, I mean, obviously for a freestyle type of frame or a long range frame, look at this weight. That is asinine. That, that is so crazy lightweight, okay? And that's the goal. Because what you're wanting to do here is be as efficient as possible, okay? And so you're using very lightweight components. So obviously you've got your Vista in here. Ah, I'm gonna drink my beverage. Okay, here's your camera. The, uh, the Vista camera, and then you've got a micro stack, so this only accepts micro stack, so it's 20 by 20 in a square, okay, and then the motors, all right, so for the motors, what you want to use is either a 2404 or an 1806, an 1805, something in that range. It needs to be a T-mount, so it attaches to a T-mount prop, and the reason for that is the motor can go down in weight, and also the propeller can go down in weight because it's a T-mount type of mount. Now, since this is a new specification, there are an, only a few companies that are making motors right now, but more are jumping on board, and we're about to see a whole lot of different options for motors. So stay tuned for that. Um, okay, uh, and so that essentially sums it up. That's the specification that you want to do. Oh, one more thing. You got to have a battery, right? Let's talk about the battery. So that's a very important part. Let me go to this specification that David came up with. And so here it is. All right, if you're running a 6S LiPo, these are your ranges here, 650 to 1050. Uh, if you're running a 4S LiPo, you're looking at 850 to 1300. And of course, you can play around and tinker with this uh, do whatever you want to do. But the goal here is to keep it lightweight. And because the whole system is so efficient and there's such low rotating mass, these motors don't need to work very hard to rotate the prop. And so what that means is that you can use a battery with very low capacity. And that's what I'm talking about with rethinking this thing is normally you wouldn't think, okay, I'm going to run a 1050 ma you know, 6S LiPo and get 10 minutes of flight time. That doesn't sound right, right? Well, you can. That's what's so crazy about these things is you can get these crazy long flight times. Now, if you want to go really wild, you can do what uh, some people have been doing where you take these batteries, these are 18650s, and you configure them like this. Check this out. Oscar Lang has got a tutorial on it. So you make your own 4S 18650 uh, battery pack for long range flying. And this is a different type of battery. And so for the overall size of the thing, it's got about double the capacity for the weight compared to a typical LiPo. So you, this is not a LiPo battery. This is a Li ion. Okay, and so that's what people are doing to get even longer flight times. You're getting crazy long flight times out of that type of pack. So that essentially sums up the specification. Now, let's go ahead and get into the specifics of this frame. This takes design elements from a number of existing designs out there. Most of them are from ours, and there's one in particular that is from another manufacturer. Okay, so I looked at our massive droner. I looked at our America. I looked at our raging droner and joined all of those design elements together to make this thing work, okay? So I would say the majority of the design elements come from the Massive Droner HD. Now, there's another frame out there that's been out there for a while. Comes from a guy by the name of Tommy, goes by Umagod. You remember the remix, right? So this is kind of built up like a remix. You actually build this thing upside down. So this on our design here on the shocker, this part I'm highlighting blue is the top plate because your battery goes up here. Let me show you what it looks like with the battery on it. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Here's a battery, right? So you get it now. That's where the battery goes. Let me hide that. Okay, so this is the top plate. But if you think about it from the aspect of a typical build, this is your bottom plate and you're building upside down. So here's your Vista, here's your micro stack and you build it upside down. You run the wires 
right? You could run the wires down the arms like this and then into the motors. That is just like a Uma God remix. <clears throat> okay, so now let's talk about how this thing works. Okay, so let's talk about the fuselage. The way that the fuselage works is you have two, uh, we'll call this the side plates, the fuselage cage side plates, but they have been split up into multiple sections. So you have the front sections, you've got the middle section, and then you have the rear section. And the reason that they are split up like this, if you look closely, is you can see that if you take these screws out right here, okay, you take those out, these plates can be rotated up so you have access to your stack. Or if you take these two screws out, okay, and then you remove these lock nuts here and pull these screws out the bottom, then this entire section can be lifted off and you now have access to the Vista and the entire micro stack. Okay. Now, when of course they're all joined together, this becomes a very solid structure that is all joined to the main plate here. And then it's further uh, sort of secured and all of the axes are uh, it stops anything from rotating about this axis because of two things. You've got the brace that runs here, and then you've got it tabbed together in this location. Okay, so that's what makes it a rigid structure. And so that's essentially how it works. It's really, really pretty basic, but it is a very, very lightweight uh, method to get a very strong structure that works fabulous for this particular spec. Now, I'm going to talk about the way that the arms join, and this is just like the America. Let me pull out an arm. This is the rear arm, and you've got a hole and you've got a slot. Okay, so what happens here is that you've got this, I call this a cross brace. That's the name that I've given it. It has some uh, captive nuts, so we press captive nuts in here, and then the screws run through the entire assembly and join to the captive nuts. And so let's say that you break an arm. Okay, so you pop it right here. It's now broken. All you gotta do is just loosen this screw. You don't have to take it all the way out, just loosen it up. And then take this screw out. You can pull the arm out and replace the arm. Super fast, super simple. One more thing I wanna mention is the motors that you can fit on here, you gotta keep in mind, there are only M2 screw holes. Right, this is a different type of motor, lightweight. All right, and the the bolt circle is 12 millimeter. Okay, so M2 screws, 12 millimeter. So we will delete that, get back into the frame assembly here. That's enough about the arms. Okay, um, yeah, the front brace, right? So you, then you've got this front brace. This is going to be required for the design. You don't want to run without the front brace. Um, it joins into the pad here, and then it is slotted into this piece. So you can see here's the slot. So it's press fit into that piece, okay? Now, um, I'm gonna talk about the camera. This is a super important part of any frame. You gotta have a proper mount for your FPV camera, especially a HD, a very expensive Cadex, you know, DJI Vista camera. Who knows who's the manufacturer? Is it DJI? Is it Cadex? Are they in cahoots? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, okay, so here's how this thing works. You got the two side plates here, um, exactly 20 millimeters apart, and then you run your screws into the camera. And so you can get anywhere from zero degrees inclination all the way up to, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was about 70, something like that, 60 or 70, pretty high inclination. You're really not gonna wanna run that high because this is a long range machine. Okay, now you don't have to run the HD Vista system in this thing if you don't want to, okay? You can use a standard analog VTX back here and you could change this out for an analog micro camera. 
Um, you'll have to put some washers in here because a micro camera is 19 millimeters in width. This is 20 millimeters in width. So you want to put some spacers of some kind that are half millimeter on either side. And if you're going to do that, you're going to run an analog camera. You can put it into this little hole here, or you can use this slot. And if you use this slot, it's going to allow you to move your micro camera forward or back and position it how you like it. So what's nice about this type of mount is that you've got two very strong carbon fiber plates that are protecting the lens of the camera. You also have this piece that is protecting the body and the lens of the camera. And so when you go smashing into stuff, you know, it's not TPU, it's not going to bend and then break your camera. It's going to protect that camera. You are going to be hard pressed to damage your camera if it's sitting in here. Okay. And then we've also got some holes up here for accessories and things. And I'll show you the accessories that I've done so far. And I'll talk about the accessories that I'm going to make in the future. So that's how that works up there. Okay. Another very important part of this system is the top plate. Okay. You're going to have to be placing a battery up there right uh, let's put the battery back okay so here's a representation of what the battery looks like so if it's on the top plate um, and you've got screws running through there typically what's going to happen is these screws are going to damage the battery we don't want that to happen so what i've done is i have countersunk this carbon fiber so the screws sit down recessed into the top plate Okay, so you're not going to damage your battery. You can stick it right on here. Now, I'm going to try and find a manufacturer to make me some battery pad. I, I know that everybody loves battery pads for some reason. I don't particularly use them, but people like them. So I'm going to try and find somebody to make me some battery pads. If you know of a company out there that can do that and it's a good quality, you know, product, let me know so I can get those made for you guys. Um, also, you can use Velcro. I like to use Velcro. I'm a Velcro guy because I'm a racer, right? So I like Velcro. Or you can just use nothing if you want. There's, there's that option as well. Now, the way that the battery is going to mount, let's go ahead and put it back in, is there's a slot right here underneath the micro stack. So you're going to have one strap going on the front. And then there's also a slot right here that the second strap goes up through. Okay, so you'll have two straps locating your battery. So that's really super nice. Okay, so that pretty much sums up the top plate and how it works with everything. Let's put the props in and show you where the props are at. So I've got a representation of the props. These are the prop circles. This is 5.1 inch props. Oops, here we go. Okay, so this is a representation of a very large, for this spec, a very large 6S battery. This is a 1050 MOS 6S 45C battery. And you can see that we've got space for the props. So you're not going to be hitting your battery. And it's going to be securely located with those two straps. So it won't be moving around. You've got plenty of space in between the prop circles or the tips of the props and the extremes of the battery. So that's how that works there. Okay, let's go ahead and hide that stuff. All right, and we will hide the battery. So that sums that up. Now, uh, let's get to the ass end of this machine. There's a whole lot of time <laughs> spent on this, uh, getting this right. So this system is going to come with this Vista antenna mount that you see here, this weird looking phallic thing that you see here. Okay, the way that this thing works is it's got a bore through it here that you press fit onto this standoff. So this is just a neural aluminum standoff, 20 millimeter long, there's three of them. One, two, three, so it mounts to that. Then, so it doesn't rotate, it is indexed from this location. And what these are, are little nubs that you run a screw through. So if you look at the side plate, you've got a hole right here and then your little nubs run down here and then you index it, you locate it uh, with these screws, little lightweight self-tapping screws. And now, so 
you have to envision that the uh, UFL mount continues on, but all I've got here is this representation here. So imagine that the pigtail is now running through this bore and then up to your antenna mount. And so you can see here's the antenna mount. See this little blue part? So you want to position your Vista antenna mount as far up as you can. You want to get it to where, you know, you're over the, the battery and it's out on its own, so it's not being obstructed by the battery. And then you take and you run a zip tie through here. So this is split down the middle. So when you run a, when you run a zip tie through here, it's going to compress and hold this antenna firmly in place. And so that's how that works. Now, that leads me to conversation about the accessories. I am busy making a shit ton of different accessories for this thing because it just needs to have a lot of options. People who want long range machines need lots of options. You want to be able to put crossfire. You want to be able to put GPS on this thing. And some people want to use GPS, but don't want to use crossfire. They just want to use the, in, the internal receiver on the Vista system so they can use the DJI remote. Some people want to use crossfire and GPS. And so it's just got to have a lot of different uh, ways that you can mount things in. So what I did is did an interlocking system. So the basis of this interlocking accessory system is this Vista mount, okay? Pretty much everybody's going to use a Vista. So this is something that most people are going to want without question, right? So look at this thing. There's these little tabs here. You can see them here, right? We've got these little tabs. And what you can do is let's say that you want to put crossfire. Let's find my crossfire mount. Bear with me. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to go find the crossfire mount, and we're going to add it in. Here we go. This takes just a minute. All right, so we're going to take this guy. We're going to make this here. Oops. Turn it upside down. Okay. We're going to add this here, this mate there. Here we go. Now, look at this. I'm almost glad this happened this way. It locks together with these little features here. Okay, you see how that locks together? Okay, so you can add different accessories to this quite easily. Okay, and it's going to be located with these two features here. And there you go. And now you can add your, uh, your Immortal T antenna there. But let's say that you wanted to have GPS as well. Okay, you wanted Crossfire and GPS. Well, check this out. Let's hide that. Here we go. So now you've got GPS. You can stick your GPS antenna on here. And then you've also got Crossfire. Well, let's say that you're one of those guys that wants to use the DJI remote. But you also want GPS. So here we've got just a GPS mount, right? So you can mount your GPS on here. Let's say that you are really testy and you're like, I don't want to mount my GPS in the rear. Who does that? That's crazy talk. I always mount mine in the front. Well, brother, he thought of, we thought of that. So let me show you this, okay? So let's go find that. Where is that? <laughs> God damn it. Okay, here we go. Here it is. All right, so we thought of that for you, my friend. Uh, you can also mount your GPS in the front, okay? And so it'd be right here, there's a little passage that you can route the wires down. And the reason that it's oriented like this is because if we put our battery on here, okay, I didn't want this thing to be sitting in an angle and sort of hidden by the battery. And so now it's sitting up a bit higher and it's spaced away from that battery sufficiently. And so. Anyways, the point, and you can go look at these accessories and figure out what you want to use, but the point is that this thing is packed 
with different accessories and different things that you can use to build this thing out the way that you want it. All right, so I think that pretty much sums up the basics of the shocker. Um, and I do want to let you know, guys, that I'm gonna, I've got the prototypes uh, being machined right now. They'll be with us shortly. We're going to build some of these up. I'm actually going to send one of these over to Johnny5FPV. He's going to do a full review. He's going to be the first guy to get one of these things and do a full review. So I suggest to go to Johnny5FPV, go to his YouTube page, and check out this review, and also check out his other videos. He's got lots of great information out there, does excellent reviews. So that pretty much sums it up. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to email me at info at catalystmachineworks.com or support at catalystmachineworks.com. One last thing I want to mention, I just thought of it, is I got an email from a guy who was telling me about a 7-inch version. He said that Brother Hobby came out with a 2404 motor that rotates 7-inch props. Hmm. I'm going to look into that spec, and if it's something worth doing, I might just make a 7-inch version of that. Anyways, that's it, guys. Happy flying.